Your one-stop Honda shop from the Bay Area News Group is Cam Inman. Cam, how are you this afternoon, my man? Doing pretty good. Pretty good. A little busy day and 49er stuff. They, they started OTAs today, but the bigger news is that they're getting the Super Bowl in 26, oh, geez, yeah, in three years. How about that? <laughs> That's right. That's right, Cam. I don't even know what you're doing now. And Cam, I do, I do want to get to the, uh, the OTAs in just a second, but since you brought up the Super Bowl. I'm I'm somewhat new to the region. I moved here about 10 months ago to take yeah. this job. And I thought when I moved here, you know, pretty new, relatively new stadium and Levi's Stadium must be pretty nice. But the reviews that I get from, from folks mm-hmm. who have been to 49ers game is that it's not the greatest experience, especially if you're on the sunny side of the stadium. Do they have plans to upgrade the place before the Super Bowl comes in 2026? Well, not not in terms of the sunny side. Okay. There's never going to be a shade put on there. But I mean, they put like they're going to dump in about a hundred million or so to okay. upgrade some of the suites and and the seats. But you know, nothing like that. I mean, I wouldn't say the reviews have been as bad as they were when it opened. I mean, when it opened, they were getting killed because of the heat, and then the NFL's kind of worked with them on the schedule so they don't play as many day games. And then, um, you know, once you start winning in a stadium, it all of a sudden looks a lot better. And <laughs> that is when true. You're, when, I think you're 4 0 in the playoffs there. So I think um, there's not as much bitching about that. And so people are kind of, you know, warming up to it. And, but it is a big deal that the NFL thinks highly enough about not just Levi Stadium, but I guess the Bay Area to award them two Super Bowls in an 11 year span. Because a lot of these teams or a lot of these cities will build a stadium. They'll get a token Super Bowl, and then they'll never be heard from again, like Jacksonville, right? Mm. Um, and, and this wasn't the smoothest operation when the Niners hosted it back in 2016 because all the events were in San Francisco for the most part, and then the game was down in Santa Clara. So I think it's going to be very similar, although they may move a lot of the events, it sounds like, to Chase Center, maybe um, Oracle Park, um, to kind of keep everything on the waterfront and the security area. The NFL is big time in security. Um, and I was back in Kansas City a week before the draft, and they had like miles of that town marked off for it. So I could see them doing that here. Cam, I'm not even going to ask you about the quarterback position because I would imagine every <laughs> show you're on starts with the quarterback question. So we're going to be a little different here on Sports 1140. I'm going to go. As we know, OTAs are not mandatory. Who do you expect not to be there, Cam? Uh, Nick Bosa, you know, he's been, he always gets the pass because he trains religiously and hard in, in the summer during, in Fort Lauderdale. Um, and he's got a big contract coming up. And it's just, you know, there's, there's guys that, I mean, like a guy like Trent Williams doesn't need these OTAs. Um, it, this, this team goes deep in the playoffs the last couple of years. So if you can buy a little extra time and keep guys off their feet, because what they really need to figure out are who the backups. Yeah. Um, the, the starting positions are not up for grabs. So they need to figure out, who the backups are, get them schooled up to last through a 20 plus game season. Um, so I don't even think it's a big deal as much anymore of who's not there for the voluntary workouts as they start today. And we'll get our first chance to out there tomorrow to really do a head count on them. Um, but I mean, to be honest, all that really counts is you're going to see Trey Lance and Sam Darnold out there. <laughs> and, and I'm going to be wondering what, what can Brock Purdy do? Are they going to allow him to even sniff the field and do a handoff? Um, and then otherwise, we're going to be charting every single pass Trey Lance and Sam Darnold throw from here all the way through August. And it's just going to be, it is going to be all quarterbacks all the time. It's a nine, it's a nine way of doing it. That's right. Um, because it's damn important. And everybody saw that in the NFC Championship game that you better have a quarterback if you want to win. Yeah. You know, I joked earlier in talking with uh, Cam Inman of the Bay Area News Group about the 49ers opening up OTAs today. I joked about, you know, Snap count 23 is on where, where you and everybody else on the 49ers beat is going to be telling us how many snaps Darnold got, how many Lance got, their completion percentages. And, I mean, th- there there is a funny element to it, as, as much hype as there is around the position. But at the same time, these a position like this is not necessarily one where we, the fan, can see it, where, where it's televised or whatever the case might be. It's one – at OTAs, in training camp, in the QB room. this What we see at OTAs will be significant for the 49ers in the quarterback position, will it not? Yeah, but you're right on the point of what what do we see and what do the coaches see? Because I will tell you what, I've covered this team for over 20 years, and if you asked me in August whether I thought Brock Purdy was the next time we had Joe Montana, I was in no chance. Because we only saw him take about three snaps every practice, okay? Wow. 
So anybody that saw him said, oh, this kid's amazing. Nobody knew, except the coaches liked what they saw. And I think what they really appreciated was a really good understanding of football um, from Brock. And that really translated once he got on the field. Um, but a lot of it is, yeah, you got to get out there and play. Now, to that, Trey Lance, you know, he comes under so much fire because he's been here for two years and has barely done anything. But to me, he's still a mystery man. I mean, he could be great. We don't know because he hasn't played. Um, because he's gotten hurt a lot in those two years. Um, and he's coming off a serious ankle injury. He's been working on the throwing motion and stuff. But now he's got somebody that can push him for, for that playing time, and that's Sam Darnold, who he's getting talked up a lot right now simply because the 49ers have a great supporting cast that he didn't have with the Jets or Panthers. Um, and and I think everybody just wants to see like how these guys do. I, it's it's not like um, the Niners have to have one guy. I think at this point, if there was one guy, it's going to be Brock because everybody saw what he could do when he was in there. Um, but guys get hurt, and you better make sure that the guys are backing them up can play. It's like the Chiefs, I you couldn't tell you who their backup quarterback is. The Mahomes, Bengals, can not tell you. Those teams rely on their main guys um, with, with Mahomes and Burrow. So, the Niners don't do as much with their quarterback because they have such a star-studded cast and a coach that can kind of pull strings and get guys open wherever. Joined by Cam in the Bay Area News Group, 49ers Insider, one of my favorite. You talked about the uh, backups, Cam. I believe Oren Burks looks to be the starter penciled in a strong side linebacker. But when you look at the bench, knowing Dre Greenlaw's had some injuries and, of course, Oren Burks been banged up quite a bit. Who do you think is the first linebacker off the bench? Is that uh, Flanagan Fowles? Yeah, I think so. And I think he's actually going to push Burks for that starting job. Wow. Okay. But it's not really a starting job. I mean, strong side linebacker is only going to play about a third of the downs because yep. you're also going to have your nickel back yep. in there for about two thirds of them. So, I mean, but you're right. Those, those are the two spots on defense that they have to fill. And they got a new nickel back in Isaiah Oliver from the Falcons um, to replace Jimmy Ward, who is, who went a lot to that defense over the years. Um, and, then on the offensive side, the only guy that they really have to replace is Mike McGlinchey at right tackle, and they're going forward with Colt McKivitz. Um, but at the same time, so once he's OTA started, I'm just going to be looking to see what linemen they have in certain spots just to kind of audition. You can't see anything about linemen until they're really, like, in games, um, in full contact drills. This is more of a passing camp the next few weeks. So, um, And then in terms of running backs, you're just going to see which guys can kind of catch the ball out of the backfield. And we're going to get our first, well, We've seen him in, in rookie camp, but our first look with with the big boys with the third round pick, Jake Moody, the third round kicker they selected when OTA start tomorrow, huh? Well, so he was here at rookie camp like a week and a half ago, and I swear to God, I I I, I stopped in my tracks because I was just kind of like amusingly looking at the kicker as I was going to go look at other parts of the field. And beyond the field goal post, there's a net. And on that net, about 30 yards up, is a tarp that's shaped as a target. And he was maybe about 25 yards, 30 yards up. But he hit the tarp. Like, it just made a sound. Like, it hit the, it hit the tarp. And I go, you got to be kidding me. I go, that's kind of funny. Then I stopped and watched some more. And he went back about 40 yards, 45 yards, and kicked one over the net into the player's parking lot, which is not a smart thing to do because he doesn't make enough money to pay for guys' sunroof. So, um, <laughs> But, I mean, <laughs> for the most part, I mean, it looked pretty good, and it doesn't mean a damn thing until you get into a pressure pack situation. And um, But I will say the last time the Niners won a Super Bowl, they did it with a rookie kicker draft in the third round named Doug Bryan out of Cal. Mm -hmm. And so now they got Jake Moody, a third rounder out of Michigan. I like where you're going, Cam. Real quick, 30 seconds or less before we let you get out of here. You you mentioned the right side, right tackle. Uh, Nickel, Womack, or Oliver, beside the quarterback with everybody's eyes on, what's the number one immediate battle that you're looking at? Is it backup running back? Is it the nickel? Or where, you, where are your eyes taking you? You know what? This is going to sound weird. It might be safety because um, oh. uh, their, their, their safety that they draft is Jair, the Jair Brown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, I mean, he could replace Sean Gibson at some point in the rookie season. Um, could he do it by the end of training camp? I don't think so because I think they like to have Gibson and Hafanga back there because they worked so well together last year. But this kid looks like he's stacked, man. He looks like he can play ball, and, and they really fell in love with him in the draft. So they moved up, I mean, a few spots in the draft to get him in the third round. But that's something to watch and to see if he can make plays when the ball's in the air because that's what this is the next few weeks. How's that? 
That's Cam Inman. It. You can check out his coverage of the 49ers at Cam Inman on Twitter. Also for the Bay Area News Group. Cam, appreciate the time, man. We'll check in again soon. All right, guys. Thank you. And he joins us on the Folsom Lake Honda hotline. Folsom Lake Honda, your one stop Honda shop. Right after this, Simona sprains her elbow trying to pat herself on the back. It's Cattles and Ronnie.